If you've ever felt uncomfortable dribbling the basketball up the floor while engaging a defender on your hip, let's analyze why that is. What causes the overall deterioration of your dribble, the loss of your rhythm, and the overall discomfort that you feel? And better yet, let's discuss why this simple method can be your cure. Hey guys, this is Michael Lancaster with I'm Possible Training and welcome to another whiteboard session. In today's session, we're gonna be going over a method which we call a carry, and we're gonna be going over why we do it and really the benefits that it's gonna give a player. And we're, the example we're gonna use is what we call a foam roller carry. Now, as usual, if you like content like this, please do me a favor, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. What I wanna go over is how carrying a foam roller off the dribble is actually gonna help you as a basketball player. Now, what I want you to do as we dive into this is first and foremost, I do not want you to picture that this foam roller is supposed to be representing a defender. That's where people typically get skill enhancement training wrong because they always try to turn everything into a game situation. They're trying to basically make the assumption that the tool we're using is supposed to represent a defender, which is not the case at all. I'm not trying to replicate a situation. I'm trying to give a player game characteristics, game traits, game qualities. In other words, give them actual skills and abilities. So in this case, the foam roller is not representing a defender, but instead, it's gonna start giving us some awesome qualities to our game. Now, as we dive into what these qualities are, this is what we do at I'm Possible Training. Whenever we talk about a method, is we make lists of how it's beneficial to a player for their game. And so let's start with the first point is that obviously you have an engaged off arm. Now, if you're thinking about a defender in this way, when you're engaging with a defender, someone is pressing into you. So by me holding a foam roller, I'm not getting that exact pressing feel, but what I am doing is I'm occupying the arm and I'm making it do something. And that goes a long way. If I was someone who was training by myself, a lot of times that player will just swing the arm freely or just leave it hanging by their side as they dribble to the basket. And in both those cases, it's not gonna actually help them dribble the basketball in that way because the game is requiring some kind of engagement. So just by holding a foam roller and keeping it right here, this off arm is at least engaged. I can feel something with it, even if it's a squeezing action instead of a pressing action. But that's the obvious, so we're gonna move on pretty quickly. The second one though is more, more important, and that is an isolated off arm. And this is extremely important, especially with the type of emphasis that a lot of strength and conditioning coaches have with players, always trying to get players to swing their arms like this. Now, so often when they're doing agility ladder work or whatever it is, this is a big emphasis that's given to players, but bottom line is that's not always game-like with a ball in your hands. Think about the game of basketball. If I'm dribbling in this hand, this arm isn't necessarily swinging, it's engaging. And so we need to get players more used to isolating that off arm, making it be more still, and making sure that they know how to run like this with the dribble, and they can't necessarily swing it freely. So by actually holding a foam roller in that way, I'm making it a little bit more isolated. The little bits of movement they can even get away with are gonna be a little bit more game-like, which will, of course, lead to a lot of benefits that I'll discuss. But that's a huge one. You gotta start learning how to isolate the off arm of a player if you want to get them more comfortable with an engaged defender. The third part, and that's really what we're leading into, is the whole concept of decoupling. Now, I, I can think about a lot back when I was playing a certain point in my career when I would have a really physical defender that would be engaging with me and I'm trying to go downhill on a fast break or whatever that might be, is I would start feeling uncomfortable with my dribble as I was fighting for position. And really, this is what is happening, what was happening to me and what happens to a lot of players. If I'm doing this with my arm, what happens is this arm wants to copy. That's natural in the human body. If you took a toddler and they're doing something with this hand, chances are strong this hand's doing the same thing. Our bodies like to couple, they like to copy. And a lot of times players don't realize this, but they haven't lost that like they should. And so while they're fighting for position here, this hand starts to also do that same type of motion and their ball starts to slowly unravel. In other words, they start to copy in a way that's destructive and their timing changes, they lose their rhythm, they start to basically become uncomfortable. That's when turnovers happen and that's what we try to, we're trying to give them when we're giving them this type of method is now your hand has to have two different jobs. One has to be isolated and one has to maintain its dribble. 
It seems like a really easy task, but it's amazing how many players just by holding a foam roller will all of a sudden feel uncomfortable with their dribble because of that decoupling issue. And so we want to force that. We want their arms to be completely separate. I don't want one side to interfere with the other. And so the concept of holding a foam roller will start teaching their body how to decouple in that way. Then of course, it leads us to better dribble step timing. If you have a player who has a foam roller in their hand and all of a sudden their dribble starts getting out of rhythm, that's another reason why they start to lose their comfort on the drive. And so by holding that foam roller and having to maintain dribble step timing, meaning that ball's being dribbled right before their inside foot consistently, now you have a player who's getting more and more used to dribbling with a defender on their hips. And we're not doing that with a defender, we're doing that in a controlled environment with the foam roller. And so pay attention when someone's doing this of how their dribble timing is impacted. And this is a very common problem. We put this foam roller in people's hands, how all of a sudden their natural dribble timing goes away. Now if a foam roller causes it, just imagine what a defender is going to cause. Which leads us of course to the whole purpose of this is just comfortable movement. Bottom line is if, I, if someone is gonna deal with defenders down the floor, even if it's just dribbling in a straight line, they have to get comfortable with their overall movement. They can't be uncomfortable with their timing. They can't be uncomfortable with having to isolate an arm and keep their dribble. They simply have to be able to act in a comfortable, fluid way with the basketball in their hands. And so by putting a foam roller in someone's hands, you're not simulating a defender, you're simulating the sensations that a defender is gonna cause, the problems that a defender is gonna cause, and basically the qualities, the attributes, and the skills that are needed in order to maintain that engagement with a defender while keeping a fluid, comfortable dribble. So if you ever wanna know why we use methods like this, even if it seems as simple as just holding a foam roller, try it out and see if you can feel these same qualities. Well, that's a simple lesson today for our whiteboard session. And once again, if you like content like this, please do me a favor. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Did you know you could receive our I'm Possible Cloud app for free? That's our checklist training system that we've used to train over 100 NBA players, which is available for $500, and you can get it for free. And all you need to do to get it is start training with a certified I'm Possible trainer in your area. When a player signs up for the I'm Possible personal training program, they get access to their trainer for a minimum of three personal training workouts per month, working their way through our globally proven checklist training system. And not only will your trainer give you free access to our checklist system, but after every workout, they will create a workout log of what you accomplished in your training session. So you can watch the videos of what you worked on and continue your training on your own. So if you wanna join the I'm Possible training movement, then head to our website today and find the trainer or I'm Possible skill lab nearest you. So you can train with the organization that helps create the world's most skilled basketball players.